Since when, if you state an opinion, are you responsible for someone else's reaction? Since when, if you verbally lean right, are you responsible for the left's physical reaction? Since when do you have the right to interrupt my First Amendment right to listen to a candidate for the highest office in the land? This is America, not the Soviet Union. This is America. You cannot prevent me from speaking or listening. You cannot censor speech. Free speech is guaranteed. It's why our founding fathers made it their very first amendment to the law of the land. It's what distinguishes us from communist countries and totalitarian regimes. It's why people risk their lives to come here. Your free speech, however, is not more important than mine. Your free speech, if it differs from mine, doesn't mean that you're right and I'm wrong and therefore I must be silenced. But that is exactly what the left tried to do in Chicago last night and again moments ago in Kansas City to more than 25,000 who came to hear Donald Trump. Some supporters, some undecided, some simply curious. Others, abject anarchists, yelling, Bernie, Bernie, and responding to activist calls at hashtag shut it down. Now, MoveOn.org organized and reportedly paid protesters to disrupt the Trump event. One protester, Sanders supporter Tony Fitzpatrick, says he went to dissent to ask those in attendance to please reconsider. Really, Tony? Let's get this straight. Tens of thousands of people waiting in line for hours, stretching city blocks, and you take it upon yourself to have a discourse on the benefits of a leftist, socialist, almost communist candidate? And pray tell us, Tony, who were you going to pick to have this discourse with? Now, you have the right to protest. Of course you do. If you want to dissent, dissent. Consider a blog, a tweet. Hell, put a sign on your front lawn. How about you just vote for someone else? But in a civilized society, you do not have the right to interrupt or censor political speech. Let us listen and make our own decisions. But then again, Tony, it's Chicago, where kids playing in the park are so used to gunfire, they don't even react. And where as many as 57 people can be shot in one weekend. I know. I live there. And you want to blame the dust up on Donald Trump. Even when protesters come for the specific purpose of creating chaos. So someone sucker punches someone else and then rightfully arrested. That's supposed to be Trump's fault. A criminal law primer, folks. Words do not justify violence. You cannot defend assault by arguing verbal provocation. Otherwise, every man who battered a woman would say he was justified because she mouthed off. And any time you get 25 to 30,000 people anywhere, unless it's to hear the Pope, there are going to be disagreements, especially in a highly charged election year like this one. And by the way, ever been to a baseball game, a heavy metal concert? People disagree. And little Marco, in his desperate attempt to criticize Trump, says. These words have real consequences. Uh, Mr. Uh, you know, Donald Trump has a big platform right now. He's the front runner in the Republican Party. Everybody's paying attention to what he's saying. And these words have consequences when you're president, even more so. Words have consequences? Well, maybe under Sharia law where you can be murdered if you say something considered offensive, but not in the United States of America and not under our Constitution. And by the way, Marco, didn't you say your parents came from Cuba to avoid a repressive regime? Stop being so small, Marco. Americans have been angry for a long time. Barack Obama the great hope and change unifier has openly pitted the haves against the have-nots, the cops against the very public they defend. 
we've never been more divided. Religions being forced to act against their own religious principles. Republicans characterized as wanting dirty air and dirty water. Conservatives are blocked from speaking at universities. The left so dictatorial that they will stop at nothing to prevent free speech, even in the cradle of education. Black Lives Matter. Occupy Wall Street determined to disrupt our free discourse so that they can control the narrative. Look, any course correction after seven years of hazardous charting will be difficult and upending. The status quo, like the establishment, are petrified of Donald Trump to the point that they are willing to take action the likes of which we have never seen in American politics. The desperation of these anarchists is nothing more than an effort to suppress the protected rights upon which our republic was founded. This is America. You cannot stop us and you cannot silence us. Beware the sleeping giant, the silent majority of us. We will not be silenced.